Hello and welcome to this week's Gospel Reflection. Please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, thy well-beloved spouse, Amen. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, He took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. This Sunday is the presentation of the Lord, and in this gospel there is so much to reflect upon. If it was me picking out these things, I would want to talk about the heart of Mary being pierced with the lance. I also would like to talk about the Holy Spirit and Simeon, the Holy Spirit and the prophetess Anna. But in prayer, I really believe that we need to focus on the heart of the issue, and that is that Mary and Joseph were fulfilling the law of the Lord and consecrating Jesus to the Lord. We often hear about consecration. We hear about Marian consecration. We hear about the consecration of St. Joseph recently. And we often lose sight of just how important consecration is to God. One of the first things that Mary and Joseph did was present the child Jesus to consecrate him to the Lord. Consecrating our children to God from their birth. What does that mean to consecrate? That means to set aside for holiness, to say, God, this child is yours. And I encourage all of you, any children that you have, take them to the chapel, even if they're just infants. Hold them up in front of the tabernacle. Hold them up before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and say, Jesus, this child is yours. I give him, I give her to you. Help me to raise your child. Help them to become who you wish for them to become. This is very important. Maybe you have not done this. Maybe your children are much older now. Take a picture of them and say, Jesus, I give you my son. Jesus, I give you my daughter. This is very, very important. You might say, how? They have free will. God honors just authority. When he had appeared to St. Margaret Mary in France, he said, I want France consecrated to the sacred heart. The king must do this. But of course, the king did not do this, and tragedy came to France. Why the king? Why not the pauper? Why not the peasants? Because God honors just authority. That's why the parents should consecrate their children. Also, at Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima said, Consecrate Russia to my Immaculate Heart. I don't know if Russia has been consecrated or not. Some people say it has been. Some people say it hasn't been. I am a simple person. The point being, it had to be the Pope in union with all of the bishops. Why? Because they are the head of the church. And so God honors when the heads do things for the rest of the members. So too, your children, you take them before the tabernacle, you take them before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, give them to God. Now there's a little bit of confusion on consecration. I hear a lot of questions recently. They say, I've already consecrated myself to the Virgin Mary. How can I be consecrated to St. Joseph? Doesn't that mean I'm giving myself 100%? How, how does this all work? So I figured now is a very good time, especially considering the readings, to review consecration. But first and foremost, we have to focus on Jesus. What is the role of Jesus in our salvation? Jesus didn't just come to pay a price. He did come. He paid the price, ultimate price of his body, blood, soul, and divinity. He offered his life for us on the cross. He paid the price, but he became man. Why did he choose to become man? So that he could become one with us, allowing us to partake in his life. 
When we are baptized, we become adopted children of God the Father. We are members of the body of Christ. We become one with Christ. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We become one with God. Jesus became man, partially because he wants us to be full of God. He wants union with God for us. We receive Holy Communion. What happens? Union with God. We die, God willing, we go to heaven. After some purgatory, what happens in heaven? Union with God. The secret to the spiritual life is doing the will of God. Why is that? Union with God. And so when we look at the child Jesus in the arms of the Virgin Mary, we have to recall that we are called to be other Christs. Christ suffered so that our suffering can be united with God's. Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity ascended body and soul into heaven. Why? So that when we die, we can go body and soul into heaven. Why? Because we are members of his body. We really eat him. We become one with him. So we cannot overlook that the primary goal of the spiritual life is union with God. Now we can move on to the other members of the Holy Family. The Blessed Virgin Mary is the Mediatrix of all grace. She's the Co-Redemptrix. She's the Immaculate Conception. She has all of these wonderful privileges that God has given her. But most importantly, it's because she is the mother of of God. If we are called to be members of Jesus Christ, we are called to be other Christ, we have to accept Mary as our mother. So consecration to Mary is absolutely fitting. In its most basic form, you're uniting yourself to Jesus Christ saying, Mary be my mother. But because Mary is the greatest of all the creatures, she pleases God more than any other creature that's even possible. She's the mediatrix of all grace. Everything she does, she does it in union with her son. That's why it's appropriate to give ourselves totally, total consecration, where everything we do, if we were wise, we would consecrate ourselves to Mary, we'd give her our merits, we'd give her our worries, everything that we are concerned with now becomes hers, everything that she is concerned with now becomes mine. So in consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary, we become preoccupied with doing the will of Mary. Now, what about consecration to St. Joseph? Because this is new, so some people might be confused. I am still 100% totus tuus Maria, and not only am I united to Jesus in surrendering myself over to the Virgin Mary, I am now united to St. Joseph, because St. Joseph himself gave himself completely to the Virgin Mary. And so by giving ourselves totally to Jesus through Mary, we are really entering into this mystery of the Holy Family. Think about this in today's reading. We have Saint Joseph, the Blessed Virgin Mary, consecrating the child Jesus to God. And that's really what is at the heart of consecration to Mary and to Saint Joseph, is that we are saying, Mary, Joseph, be my mother. Truly and really be my mother. And they in turn, once we hand over the rights of our life to them, they in turn, in a more fulfilling, in a more fulfilling way, they hand us over to God the Father. And God is very pleased. We give them rights over us. We set our lives aside for holiness and therefore we are preparing ourselves to do the work of the Lord. If you have not consecrated your children to the Lord, even remotely, even from afar, I encourage you to do this. If you yourself have not given your life completely over to God, I encourage you to consecrate yourself to Jesus through Mary. And then focus on that relationship with St. Joseph. St. Joseph was the provider of the Holy Family. He was a protector of the Holy Family. He's the guardian of virgins. He's the terror of demons. He's the patron of a happy and holy death. He has so many graces that he wants to offer us. And if you focus on your relationship with Jesus and Mary, St. Joseph is right there with us. He will be really your father, but you have to give him the authority to say yes. I recently did my consecration to St. Joseph, and I can tell you I have received so many graces that I could not even have imagined. And I really feel when I did my consecration to Joseph, I really feel in a moment of grace, I really believe that he was saying to me, I'm your father. You have nothing to worry about ever. You focus on doing the will of Mary, serving my son as best as you can. When you need something, when you need consolation, when you need strength, when you need protection from temptation, when you need encouragement, just call on my name. I'll be here for you. And he was really, and he's really not just for me, but for every, every Christian who gives their heart over to God. Every Christian who says, my life 
is worthless. It's only worth something when it's united to God. Give yourself completely over to the service of the Virgin Mary. Now is the time for triumph in the church. The laborers are few and the harvest is great. If you really want to do something worthwhile, you want to give all of your activities to Mary so that she can be fruitful in the mission of evangelization, touching souls all over the world. You don't even realize it because of everything you're offering up in union with the actions of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. Give yourself completely to Mary and also take seriously. You are not a child of an only parent. You've got a spiritual mother, the Blessed Mother. You've got a spiritual father, St. Joseph. You've got God the Father in heaven. Being Catholic is so beautiful because we are part of a holy family. God bless you, God love you, and we'll see you next week.